If you have an old netbook lying around, you may be wondering if there is anything useful you can do with it. Well, guess what? There is. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's video. Hi everyone, this is Fortnan from Super User Projectile. Today I'm going to be upgrading an old netbook and most importantly, installing a Linux distribution on it. So stay tuned for today's video and let's get right to it, to the tutorial. So first of all, the upgrade process, I'm not actually going to show you that either, but basically I upgraded it from 1GB of RAM to 2 and I also upgraded the storage from a hard drive to an SSD, so that will give us a boost in performance when we install our operating system. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to lubuntu.net. So you want to go to the download and then you want to click the option that will work on your computer. So the option that will work on most netbooks is this one. So I'm going to click that and it downloads. So it's a pretty small file, it should download fairly quickly, but we will come back when it is done. Okay, the download has completed and if you don't have Raspberry Pi Imager installed on your computer, you can do that using the link in the description. But what you want to do is go to Raspberry Pi Imager, click choose OS, go down to use custom and select the Lubuntu ISO you just downloaded. Now go to choose storage and what you want to do is plug a USB drive into your computer and then you will see it right here and you can click on it. Now you can click write confirm and you may have to enter your password. So if you're on Windows you will need to confirm the UAC prompt. If you're on Mac OS or Linux you'll need to enter your password. But now this is writing and we will come back when it is done. Okay this is done and now it's time to install the OS. So to install Ubuntu, you want to plug in your USB drive to the computer and now you want to turn it on and you want to start quickly pressing a key. F9 is the key for this model, although it may be escape or something else. So you want to turn this on and start pressing F9. And if you're quick enough, you will get the screen similar to these. So you want to go down to your USB drive and you want to select that option. Now you will be presented with the Lubuntu setup screen. Now, unfortunately, I can't screen record this time, but basically I will show you how to go through the setup. So you want to select your language and then you want to do install Ubuntu so you can navigate around with your keyboard keys and you will be presented with these. You want to select your language and then you want to select your country and I would recommend saying no to the keyboard layout detection and selecting your keyboard layout and you will most likely come to the screen and basically you don't have ethernet connected so you want to do continue and then you want to do retry network auto configuration when you have your ethernet cable connected so you want to enter a host name right here. So by default, it's Ubuntu, but I'm going to specify something else. So this will be the name of the device on your network. And now you want to select that. Then you want to enter the full name for the new user. So I have right here administrator, and then we have a username for our accounts. And I'm going to do me, and then we do enter and now we choose a password for our new user then you will get this prompt where you want to confirm your time zone and then we want to partition our disks here so we do continue and then we do guided use entire disk and select our disk which is the solid state drive so we select that and it will partition the disk and we want to confirm to write the changes so this will erase your other operating system if you have another operating system on here, so use this with caution. You will get this prompt, just press enter. You will come to these points and you can just select yes. And then you can select dev sda or whatever drive you are installing the operating system on. And then you will come to these points and unless you have another operating system, if you are dual booting this, you select yes. 
Now the installation is completed and what we want to do is click continue. Then wait a little bit and as soon as everything turns off, remove the USB drive. And now you will arrive in Lubuntu and now you can enter your password. Depending on the version you downloaded, you may get the prompt here, but you want to click don't upgrade if you do because you can't get it anyway, so you want to click OK. And now you want to go down to the menu here, and you want to go to Preferences, Additional Drivers, and install a Wi-Fi driver if you don't have one. After a period of loading, you will get to the screen, and you basically want to enable all disabled drivers, and then you want to click Apply Changes when you are done. We'll need to enter your password, and then when that finishes, you can close it, press Ctrl Alt T, and type these commands. Now press Enter, and enter your password. Now this will update the system, and we will be back when it is done. Alright, all the updates have completed. I have rebooted the netbook, and we are back right here. So what I'm going to do is test out some of the built-in software and then we will install some more and set these up the way we like it. So let's start off here with some Office software. So this comes with a word processor and a spreadsheet program. And if we launch that there, it comes up here and it's actually a pretty lightweight program. And so we can do all our document editing in here. And so also if we open up a spreadsheet program, we can see it right here and this should work just fine except the format that it wants to save in is not a normal format so you want to change that. But anyway let's open up our task manager or whatever they call it in this operating system, yes it's called task manager right here and so we can see CPU and RAM usage. So if we close that stuff down, we have some other software here. So we have that pre-installed and then we have also the Firefox web browser. So we have the Firefox web browser right here and let's do some browsing in it. So we will head over to the address bar and type in this URL. So let's type in this, and this is my channel, so go visit it if you haven't already done so. But let's visit this right here in this netbook. Now I'm not going to trim these out because I want to show you, you know, how it feels. And I will close out this other tab right here and also bring up the task manager. So we are at 100% CPU usage, but that's not surprising. And browsers should go up to 100% because it means that they are usual. It means that they are utilizing the CPU. So this finally loads right here. And if you see this video of me running this netbook with Windows. It was slower than that, but this is not, not super good. So, you know, video playback is not so good on this, but you know, normal browsing is actually not too bad. So let's try to play a video, even though I know it's not recommended for this. Let's try a pretty low resolution right here. I mean, it's not a very high resolution screen. I do have it hooked up to a higher resolution, you know, capture device. So it's probably running a little bit slower, but it's probably really not that noticeable. And yeah, we pretty much don't even need stats for nerds because we can tell it's pretty bad. So, you know, this computer definitely isn't going to be good for video playback. However, some light browsing it might actually do fine in. So if we go over to here and head over to raspberrypi.org this computer is getting hot by the way with all that hard work it's it's really cranking on its fans and just the keyboard area is hot 
but if we can scroll down here, yeah, it's actually doing pretty good. If we go to the hardware, all products, definitely not super fast. But if you consider that this is a single core netbook that is also, you know, really old because all netbooks are old, it's actually doing reasonably well, I think. But yeah, it's definitely not going to be a very good experience web browsing. Although, as we saw earlier, the word processor and spreadsheet program, they actually perform pretty reasonably which is nice, but let's install some software here. So press Ctrl Alt T to open the terminal and then we will type this. So sudo apt install chromium browser because this is chromium. So it's kind of like Chrome. So we want options here. I'm not sure which performs better on this device, but we can install that as an option. And then we can install GIMP if we'd like, although I'm not going to do that right now. And so we will just do the Chromium browser. So I'm just going to test this out. We need to enter our password. And here we are installing it. But some other things that we can do is we can actually um, theme this a little bit. So theming Raspberry Pi OS, you can see my video on that. It's actually pretty similar because it uses LXDE. So we can get, you know, some touches on these. But yeah, we can just, you know, set these up as we like. But to give you a glimpse of the performance, that, that was it. Um, but this video is mostly about installing the operating system. So I think we're about done here. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and we hope to see you again in the next video. Until next time, it's Fortnite Kiwi from Super User Project Dial. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.